welcome to episode two of Mina's Basket Case. This is something of a special demand video. Loads of people have been asking me about what I can do with Magnolia Blossom. So I have moved the previous episode two and three over to make room for Magnolia because the season for this is nearly over. They taste sort of like rose petals, but really, really strong and with a much more substantial texture. I'm in a friend's garden. They've got this wonderful hedge of flowering currants and magnolia blossom, and they've kindly said that I can pick what I need in exchange for whatever I make. Right, I think I have got more than enough in here to do what I want to do when I get home. So, time to go back to my kitchen. Hello, I'm home with my basket of magnolia blossom. Now, to take advantage of the fact that they do smell absolutely heavenly, I am going to make a sorbet. Now, in here, in this pot, I have got 350 grams of sugar with 700 milliliters of water, the zest of two lemons that I've already got in this bowl, plus the zest of this lemon and the juice of this lemon is what I'm going to need for my sorbet. So I'm just going to start with zesting my lemon into my sugar. The interesting thing is that I've got some blossom in my basket that I picked yesterday when the sun was really, really shining. And the smell is actually quite a bit stronger from those blossoms than it is from the others. So sunlight isn't just good for making you feel happy. And this is the zest of another couple of lemons. I'm going to add my lemon juice. To that, I'm going to add my water. And switch it on. While that's starting to cook, I turn the heat down a little bit. I'm going to prep my blossom. This is a recipe that I would normally use with rose petals. And when you make it with rose petals, you need about sort of seven good handfuls of rose petals. Now, the magnolia petals are not only bigger, they're also sort of harder. So one handful isn't quite the same. So once I've put in the quantity I think I need, I'm going to weigh it so that you can replicate it more easily, I think. I'm just giving it a stir.
Right. Now, this blossom I am going to shred up into small little pieces because if I try and put all of this into there, it's just going to be a mess. So I think the easiest thing to do will be to use a pair of scissors. Turn my heat down a bit further. I don't want that to start boiling and be ready before I finish shredding up my magnolia flowers. Now that I'm ready to be watching what's going on, I'm turning the heat up a bit underneath the sugar syrup just so it comes to the boil. Right, so that's boiling happily and I'm going to boil it for one minute. So that's boiled for a minute. So I'm going to add my magnolia blossom. smells oh it smells so nice now I'm going to get the lid of my pot cover it and leave it to infuse until later tonight when I will churn it in my ice cream machine and make some amazing magnolia blossom Sobe. The magnolia blossoms have now been steeping for about eight hours, so I'm going to strain them. Now, I'm going to be using this sieve. It's so fine, it's almost a muslin on a frame. You need something that's really, really fine, so a muslin would be ideal or a sieve like this, but don't use a normal sieve because most of the bits will just pass straight through. So, open it up. And you can kind of see the flowers have gone sort of limp and translucent now. So I'm just going to put them in ladle by ladle. You want to press out the liquid. A bowl to put the spent blossom into. Right, so we have about just over three quarters of a litre of magnolia blossom syrup here. And this is going to go into my ice cream machine to be churned into sorbet. Now I'm going to switch on my ice cream machine. And slowly pour in my syrup. Okay. 
The other ingredient that I very nearly forgot to add is one tablespoon of liquid glycerin. My sorbet is now almost completely ready and I think the timer is going to go off any second now. I'm going to remove the sorbet from the machine. Right, that's my sorbet out. You need to work relatively quickly because it will just continue to melt, which you don't want. I'm going to transfer it into this container that I've previously frozen. Going to cover it and put it into the freezer until it's frozen completely solid. The flavour of this sorbet is truly sublime. Floral with a wonderful citrusy finish. Thank you for watching and do join me again on the next episode of Mina's Basket Case. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe. Happy foraging!